Welcome to another three aficionados. Here we are. Daniel Ross, Peter Pitten. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sneezy McFuckface. <laughs> and me, Steve Yip. And the BLS. We're here talking about all things analog, all things addictive. And we're going to pop it off. We're going to be talking about new updates, watches, cars, other problems that I have. And whatever the fuck that Daniel is drinking for Swill. Let's pop it off. Oh, yeah, this is Dude, my what? mug. Yeah, it was a little delayed, but we did do it. Yeah, uncorked. Oh, nailed it. Yeah. And hourglass. <laughs> Slowly we, counting the sands of time. What are we drinking there, Daniel? Got a nice Earl Grey here. Oh yeah, yeah. A little bit of honey. Got a little, little bit of milk in your voice. Ain't nothing more exciting than a nice cup of with your friends. That's right. Yeah, boys. Cheers. Cheers. So we're getting we're getting into uh, some updates. I think Peter's got a watch on the horizon. I always have cars and watches on the demand and horizon, <laughs> but they never fucking come. <laughs> But why don't we start it off? What are you what are you wearing over there in the T dot O dot? Moi? Yeah. I'm I am honored. Thank you for letting me start this pop off session. I've got my Victor Knox Dive Master on. Classic, classic piece of quartz kit. And uh, I love it. Yep. I was uh, sitting in the park the other day and I was wearing this. And I um, I was careless. Hit the uh, hit the wooden bench with it and looked down and saw a piece of wood stuck in the <laughs> side of the watch and not a scratch on the case or yeah, the bezel or that's the crystal. That's amazing. So if you want a watch that you can just say, you know, I don't I don't care about my extremities and I will pay no attention to where they are, this is a great option for you. Victor and Ox are pretty bulletproof. Ladies yeah. for would those. recommend. For those ladies who would like to know, Daniel does not care about his extremities. He's open nope. for business. <laughs> Peter, None of my talk about your extremity accessory. I uh, currently got my extremity accessory of the day as my, my classic tutor. I feel like for anyone who's watched this before, they've probably seen it a few times, but it's the Tudor Bronze. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a great watch for what it is. I really enjoy it. It's It looks different than most other, other watches, which is kind of cool, but... It's, I don't know, it's a classic looking watch. I feel like most most of us have probably seen it many a time before. But. I feel like we haven't seen it for a while. And, it's been uh, a while. Yeah. The case back. I want to see the case back because yeah. I never get to see it in it's, person. Unfortunately, the shit part is it's hidden by this freaking strap. I'm going to demand that's that you take the strap off. Yeah, we could definitely do that. That is not an issue at all, but it does. It is hidden back there, but yeah, you can. It's it's the. I love that watch. It hides it really, really well. I like how Peter's showing himself right now. Yeah, yeah. Can sorry. You, can you pull mm -hmm. it? Put it in there. I can like try. You can <laughs> barely see it. That's about as far for as for those you can... for those people on the podcast. Yeah, for we're anyone, talking about watches. For anyone uh, who doesn't know or hasn't seen it before, the back of my tutor is actually engraved, uh, and it says "fuck cancer" on the back of it. So yeah that's basically i can't it, show you guys unfortunately show. no it really, it's so it stuck on oh it's so what, is this tight mold? yeah it's so tight it's crazy oh yeah. there's so many so, so many crazy things <laughs> over time the nato it will mold to your wrist <laughs> yeah the nato unfortunately needs to be changed but i just i've been looking around i haven't really found a strap that 100 percent like pleases me at but i don't know i think you need um one like my See. the one that i've got for the fxd uh, yeah, those ones are cool. Yeah, I just had to think about what's the original one you mean with the... Well, either oh, one, one. The NDC, the Marine National oh, NDC, or the FXD. The NDC would look really nice. stretchy, parachute kind of feeling thing. You know the nice thing about that um, is, so this this has a, a like actual points where you put it through the spring bar so it won't slide, mm. but those ones you just feed it through. So you could actually right. take it off and still show the back of the watch yeah. to anyone who wants to see, but then it wouldn't... Uh, yeah, so then you could still, that would actually be a good idea. But. I feel like this is the pirate ship. It's so like, uh, 
patinaed. It is, and yeah. Corroded on the copper. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot darker than when I bought it for sure. I feel like when I bought it, it was probably more like the color on the sides there. It but... looks like the depths of Daniel's soul, and he was only at sea as a seaman <laughs> for how long? Were you a seaman? Daniel? Two years. Two years. Jesus. That was uh, uh, on your balls. <laughs> I tell you, it ages you. Oh, oh yeah. it ages. It's a combination of the boat, the lifestyle, and the people you have to spend time with. Oh, I thought oh, you were yeah. going to use that BLF on your hat. <laughs> boat, lifestyle, and man. Boat life sucks. No, boat life sucks. <laughs> no, I love boat life. I would I would kill to live on it, live on a yacht again, mm. or a sailboat of any kind, really. Like, dope. It's something very liberating about not knowing if what bed you're in no, sorry, bed you're sleeping in is going to be above water or below water when you wake up. It's uh, not many other places you'll experience that it's degree true. of anxiety. I think I'm okay without experiencing that. <laughs> What's on your wrist, Steve? What's on the Daytona Back to the two. Modern Paul Newman before the Paul Newman that we're about to talk about. It's the uh, gold uh, on the uh, the oyster strap oyster flex strap um with the uh black dial and the red uh chrono hand you don't see this anymore because it's now discontinued the new version doesn't have the red chrono chrono hand or the black sub dial hands and i think that the outer red track is gone as well so like all the sporty elements that i appreciated about this they're gone in the new one but there is something that is on the horizon that is tickling my pickle. But we'll get to that in a little bit in the news updates. Or should we just I'm get looking into forward it right to that now? update? I want to just quickly yeah, apologize yeah. for booing you. Oh, well, you should. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm deeply drowned. sorry. We drowned you out completely, so it didn't even matter. Okay. Share desktop. And then we're going to go to the Hodinkee story. So this is the in celebration of 100 years of Le Mans, the Daytona. And so it's kind of cool because the Daytona was originally like intended for a space watch, like the uh, Cosmograph. Um, and then it didn't win uh, the NASA test. And that went to the Omega Moon Swatch, Moon Watch, not Moon Swatch. And uh, then it, it Rolex pivoted and they were, had like drafts and thinking about this as Le Mans. And then they went with Daytona. So now this is like the Daytona Le Mans. But it also has features of Paul Newman um, with like a 6263 vibe. And so you'll see that in the sub dials that it's kind of like this exotic dial appearance. But it's also a, a completely well adjusted uh, movement. So it's also got a 24 hour chron chrono because it would only do 12 hours. And because 24 hours of Le Mans, cool. it's going to capture that. Um, so this is technically gone from a 4131 movement to the 4132 movement. So it's a modified version of the new movement. And uh, also white gold and love the little 100 mark on the, uh, the bezel that's in red. And it also has an open case back with the gold, um, the gold oh, rotor, yeah. rotor. That's yeah. it. Yep. So there's uh, pictures of it from Le Mans. And to That's me, sick. if there was ever a watch that captured me entirely, it would be this. I would sell my left nut for this. Watch for sure. Yeah, I would liquidate a lot for this one. That's perfect. It's, it's pretty. And nice thing is like it's in a sense like it's it's being white gold. It is like it's obviously not extremely subtle, but it, it's more subtle than walking around with like your your uh, yellow gold mare on. Right. Like that's like. It's it's and it's really it's beautiful. Like it's got a lot of really cool tones to it. And I would just say there's like little a uh, hundred hour marker in the twenty four hour uh, chrono is quite interesting too. I have to say, if I didn't have the family nostalgia of having my grandfather really imprint on that watch, this watch I would take in a heartbeat and throw that one off to the side. This is like, I think this is the closest to Grail that I've ever had. You know, like other than a rainbow Daytona, I don't, yeah. I can't think of anything else that I would think of before this, in, at least in the Rolex lineup for right now. I mean, even I'd rather have this than a Nautilus or like any, I, wow. I, I, it's just so much me because it's that motor racing, it's that 
Daytona, it's that Newman, it's Le Mans, it's Porsche, it's Ferrari. Ferrari won the Le Mans. Too bad for Porsche. It was like 50 years for Ferrari returning back and 75 years of Porsche and uh, and somehow Ferrari came back and won it. So yeah, pretty cool. And it was that was a great race. Good. No, I would I would jump on this watch in a heartbeat. Yeah. This is um yeah, this, I think I said it's perfect already. So I'm just going to leave it at that. This is a perfect example of a Rolex. It's also got a sunburst uh, dial. So it's not just a flat black dial. Oh, so it's kind of, you can see that sunburst and that grain. So it's not just a simple black uh, 116500 LN. It's a. Uh, well, it's white gold, of course. Also, this is the first precious metal uh, non. Okay, so this is the first gold version that has had a ceramic bezel. Everyone thought that that was going to happen this year, and we cool. saw bezels that were still not uh, ceramic when it's a full gold. Um, we only see ceramic bezels on like precious yours? metal on oyster like flex. oyster flex or in the platinum. Uh, Daytona. So this kind of rounds it out. So goddamn, I love it. I love it so yeah, much. Cool. It's like a perfect balance of new, old, motor, sport, watch. It's like me, but I'm a bit more, I'm a bit less uh, valuable. No, this watch can't help anybody with any kind of issues they might walk into the ER with. So I'll dismiss that last comment as just being self-sabotaging and say that you are, your telos is greater than Rolex. My telos? But telos, yes. Mm. Although this watch, it is giving you a run for your money. Yep, definitely. It's beautiful. It's so damn good. Peter? I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Would you trade the John Mayer for this? Would you take a Platona over this? I'd take the Platona over this for yeah. sure. I'm not like a huge yellow gold person, like besides that watch. Like that watch is great. I've always like kind of like rose gold and white gold a bit more. But I, uh, yeah, I would, I'd probably take the Platona overall, but I'd probably take this second over the, I don't know, it'd actually be a pretty good toss up. But I think I'd probably take this just for kind of like the nostalgia of it and just it's kind of racing heritage and stuff. It's pretty badass. Yeah. So damn good. Peter's not old enough yet to want a yellow gold watch. Once no. you break over 35, I promise you that will change. It will change. He I, yeah. has that All of a sudden, getting them there. Yeah. It's, you're going to want a gold Rolex and a gold Camry. And a gold <laughs> Rolex and a gold Camry. I think the gold Camry precedes it. This was the first um, kind of like in person shot that was done by like the, I, I think Rolex France GM uh, was wearing this at, at uh, Le Mans. It looks pretty damn good. It's interesting. Yeah. The subdials look almost white there. So it's it, better in person. Yeah, I think it looks so much more vintage, and it and you can spec it there too, right on the configurator. So I was like immediately messaging, and it was like before anyone really knew about this. So as soon as I saw it on mm -hmm. social media, I thought it was just a rumor, and then I was like, oh shit, it's real, and I was like, god damn, sell your left kidney right now for it. I didn't realize there's actually two different uh, dial. Variations. So the configurator has the different dial configurations, but not for this. Okay. This is the only way you can take it Understand. with the black sundial or sunburst dial. Um, it's that's the only one. It has other white gold configurations, but it's not the 100 anniversary Le Mans. Okay. Newman kind of. I don't think they have an actual definite name, but I mean, I'm sure it's going to be nicknamed the Newman or the Le Mans. I think Le Mans is better. Yep. Yeah. Because yep. this is the Newman. Well, yep. actually, the original Newman is the Newman, but whatever. It's pretty cool. I love it. And it, this, they actually really broke their own rules of like, they always have not really wanted to go back historically. And this is a definite nostalgic nod. This is like something out of Tudor. This is like the first time I think we've seen Rolex actually go back into the yeah. into the history books. So, yeah. I won't perseverate here. Would you take it over an Aquanaut? I handled one of these. This was so pretty impressive. I, was, I would. I was helping uh, a friend. Like I would straight up. 
you'd take the uh, Rolex over the Aquanaut? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I it's cooler. The Aquanaut, that was uh, like the Chrono, I think it's the world timer. The, the or whatever. 5164. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I would that's... I would take that one for sure. But besides this, no, I'll take the I'll take the Daytona. That was what I thought of when I saw this. So this is the regular steel aquanaut. Yeah. But when I thought about handling it, I was like, yeah, 5164A is what, what I'd prefer to the two, but this is the much cheaper entry level and probably it's, a little yeah. bit more attainable. Do you know what the retail is on it? I think it Canadian dollars is about twenty nine. Well, that's actually not as I thought it was going to be more expensive, to be honest. So that's not I don't well. Know. I mean, aftermarket, like once you that's buy, like thing. you, you yeah. have to buy so much to qualify to get yeah. this. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's no not cheap at all. But yeah, it's pretty. Is that cool. the same watch in the second one? Yeah, it's just uh, the dial is so oh, reflective. Cool. But this Nautilus here, that one actually was the one that took it for me. This is white gold on on a strap. Is it used? Um, no, no. This okay, is, this is sorry. It looked like it had a, a. Oh no, there's plastic on it. Yeah, I think that this one is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to me. It's also white gold, and it's also like double the price, more than double the price. And uh, that's cool. Yeah, I still come back to this. This is the one that I want. The mm -hmm. Le Mans. But yeah, that's that's uh, it for my watch news. But let's talk about Peter's. Uh, future acquisition and my research. <laughs> Peter? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I've been kind of looking around at a new watch recently. Uh, yeah, uh, and basically it's, it's, I don't really know what's inspired it too much. I think more than anything, what has kind of inspired it is just my love with the blue dial. It's the it's the uh Piso prx no it's if you search at the powermatic if you put it's the prx powermat yeah that one there you go powermatic yeah. yeah okay uh if you look at the photos Just we need to get the to different dial well. anyway so basically it almost looks like a variation of the 41 millimeter like kind of looks quite similar to the 41 millimeter uh uh crap what is it oyster perpetual that i have always been kind of in love with so this is my thought is to be like well maybe this is something for uh one eighth the price that i could pick up and it's is only it? yeah it is yeah. this is so it's it's like a, a tiffany blue but also it's got like a textured dial yeah it's um, quite interesting like an audemars piguet and it's got an integrated bracelet yeah yeah and uh it's 41 millimeters or sorry 40 millimeters it's got a open case back it looks pretty interesting it is automatic it's just it's not just a date uh but yeah it, it's it's i think it's kind of cool it's it's not extremely expensive by no means but i think it'd just be something a little bit dressier i don't really have anything that kind of fits the more like dressy category per se and in like personal photos like you see on instagram and stuff like that it looks a lot better it's got like quite a nice shine to the dial and it's it's fairly textured so it's uh i think it looks good but yeah. we'll Excuse me. We'll see. I haven't one hundred percent pulled the trigger on it, but you can't unfortunately find it in Calgary because it's it's pretty hard to, to order. Like you I can even buy left. it online. It seems that's the thing. You can order it right from them, but then it's only you can like they're kind of somewhat limited kind of thing. Hmm. Does uh, it say how many? How many they have? I don't know. It just says limited stock availability. I don't know if the watch is actually limited in its sense, but nine seventy five Canadian. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I would like to do a bit more research on it because honestly, I haven't done a ton of research on Tiso and like I've never owned one before and I know it is a little bit more money, but uh, once I kind of do my due diligence and see if it's something I'd be interested in, I, I would consider it. I think it's a nice looking watch. It always comes up on my Instagram, just kind of is something and I've been looking at it for a while and I don't know, I'm, it's my 25th birthday coming up here fairly soon. So I feel like it'd be almost some time to get myself something little bit nicer but not uh not too crazy yet so i think this would be a potentially appropriate watch and i found there's kind of like like the thousand dollar marks almost kind of a hard range to find like I've, mm -hmm. I've noticed there's like not a ton it's either like you go like 500 or like you go into the two to three thousand dollar range so I, I haven't found like anything too too crazy around there besides this but. i think mainly you're looking at seiko yeah and what else? Any other thoughts around uh, Oris? Daniel loves Oris. Oh, actually, I could look at some mm -hmm. Orises. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Or it says. I do th I do think that you have to go up a, a bit in price to get into the Oris catalog. Mm -hmm. But this is very what nice. I know about this this particular watch is that um people like Teddy Baldessair and uh Watch Finder and Co. Um several different specialists who are in the industry deeply have said this is one of their favorite watches of the year. So and they consistently rank it as their top pick for a watch okay. that's at this price point. So this is more so, you know, your X? Yeah, because the normal them. one is quartz. So this is the automatic version. So it runs almost, I would say, double what the normal PRX does. But you also don't get the, ex the nice dial, which is basically one of the reasons why I would, would like it. And the movement looks pretty nice. I mean, I don't know a ton of, but I know it's an 80-hour uh, power reserve. And basically, that's about as much as I know about it, but it, it is cool. I think it's like water resistant to 100 meters or something along the line. It's not really like I'd probably take it diving, but it would be, I think it'd be kind of just cool watch. I don't think I'd probably wear it to work, but I would maybe like it just as something a little bit more dressy. Like I do love my tutor, but I almost feel like it's almost like, I sometimes when I like try to dress it up, it just feels almost a little bit too rugged in a sense. And mm -hmm. it, it works, you can dress it up, but it, mm -hmm. for me, it'd be nice almost to have something that kind of hits the dressy yeah. dressiness. So we'll see, I'm, I'm going to consider it. And it's very potential. It could be coming down the, the pipeline fairly soon, but we'll see. That's cool. I almost pulled the trigger on it this afternoon, actually. I was like, oh, yeah. we'll wait though. We'll see. You know, I may end up ordering it over I the like next it. few days. I so, like well, I think you should very strongly consider it. Yeah, and, I think so too. Um, I think it looked great on you. It's Thank very you. much you. It is a it's, Peter Watch. It's a Peter Watch. I think that's one of my favorite colors or tone that color that I've seen on any watch, actually. Yeah, I think it looks great. I think they did a good job of capturing it. I mean, yeah, it does mm. look like uh, the Oyster Perpetual bit, but I mean, it's 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 whatever. It's not. I mean, that. I think that they've definitely gone after AP vibes here. I, Integrated I, bracelet, the dial with the texture. I'm trying I to remember agree. what they call it. It's, like, it's also a Vacheron kind of style say, with the way like that the bracelet Vacheron integrates. Yeah, yeah. It looks like the Vacheron, what was that, the 777? 222, the Aston, yeah, the 222. Yeah, with the more squared um, edges, yeah. bevels. Yeah, when that came out, I was all over it. And I remember also considering this watch basically for the same reason that Peter's considering it. Yeah. Where it, for, as far as like a value proposition goes, it knocks it out of the park. Yeah. And it's a Swiss name. People respect Tiso. It's a well, you know, it's a well-known brand that makes a good product. And this is a nice example. Yeah. And the museum viewing case back kind of seals the deal for me. I agree. It looks so nice. It's cool to just be able to watch the rotor move around and see all the little details and get a loop in, loop in there you know, and have a good look with the eye. You get a lot of money. The Sapphire Crystal, the uh, automatic movements, 80 hour power reserve, 100 meters. Like this could be a watch to just do everything yeah. and cost you relatively little compared to most watches. You know, it's punching well above its weight. It's yeah, certainly not a pretty yeah. movement, um, but it, it kind of no. fulfills that rugged look there. I think it's cool. It gets my seal of approval. I'd be uh I'd be curious to see what it compares to to like when if I actually do go through with it to like my Seikos or things like that just because I already have a couple and that's not as much as I do love them it's I I, I do enjoy adding new different watches to my collection and trying new stuff uh it, it's it's different like when you're getting to like a more expensive category and it's like there's more not necessarily limited options, but certain things, if you're going to spend the money, you may want to go with, but for like this price point, I think it's like, I could try something and I, as, as good of reviews and as good a word as there is about this watch, I think it'd be worth it. Just don't get this one. Mm -hmm. not. No, yeah, I'm, don't get that one. The, this the, one, this two-tone one. The bright blue uh, dial. The, I feel the like I'd go with the dark blue personally, but yeah. I think the bright blue is definitely the, uh, the one to go with like if if you just objectively put them down in front of me i'd go bright blue or sorry dark blue oh, just like the so a, ap yeah um but this light blue is uh that's the color the objective choice for sure and that's the color of peter if, yeah. for those who don't know peter is half smurf yeah i am mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. the, the <laughs> obviously the, 
41 uh, millimeter oyster perpetual is absolutely not obtainable anymore. It's potential, maybe the smaller one would be at some point. You can get a 36 potentially, Yeah, but you'd for need sure. to put your name on the list like yesterday Yeah. for you to be 30. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, and then potentially could happen. It's, it doesn't hurt though. It could be a could be a good idea. Yeah. Never hurts to at least throw I your said. name on it. That's yeah. what I said to him. I was like, mm. yeah. if you think that you want it in the future, don't wait till in the future when you can afford it. Just yeah. put your name down on it. And then, yeah. Yeah. When you can't afford it, it would be yeah. I yeah. agree. That's the I'd say the way to do it. And then yeah, when I when I have it, then I have two two Tiffany colored watches, and then we'll go from there. Two Tiffs. Yeah, two you have your day to day, and then your wear it out at night one exactly tiffy p <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about we, we're gonna consider what peter is also going to be driving oh I yes think we oh. had a, a follow-up to this no we didn't no. i feel like peter rejected my very good one that i fucking should have bought because it was like Super, such a steal yeah um so what was it the the this wrx but it was like 17,000 Canadian, had a 70,000 kilometers, clean one owner, no stories, nothing, mint. And like, you never see, that's like, you that's like garage anyway. queen level of a Subaru WRX. It was a two, it was the 265 horsepower with the wide flared. It was like a, what is that? A 20, it was a 13, 13 or yeah, yeah, 14 maybe. Yep. And they're all like well over a hundred thousand yeah. kilometers. Um, but yeah, so have you have you refined your list? Have you thought about what you're well, getting? I, so like I do have like a couple of things I've more so considered kind of thing. I would say like my practical like things that I've like kind of been considering still, of course, are like the Colorado. Uh, I haven't really considered the Tacoma anymore. It's mostly kind of been narrowed down to the Colorado, the the Canyon or the the frontier i do like the new body style frontiers they're very nice looking Nissan? i also yeah yeah i also do very much like the, the newer broncos as well but they're very expensive mm, right now. so yeah that's another thing i also have been trying to consider like getting in like some smaller vehicles but i i have like a hard i maybe need to go out and actually drive some like just to just to try it but i haven't uh really anything smaller than that i don't know it just for me like my what i do i feel like it would be at this moment, like I would love to have something like a little sports car one day when I can have a separate like two vehicles, right? And it could be like something I store and drive on nice days. But when I only have two vehicle or one vehicle right now, I feel like just the comfort and, and the capability of a little bit larger vehicle right now just fits my lifestyle. But I also should probably just go out and maybe just drive a couple just to see what it'd be like. It'd also be a good option, but geo tracker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys got any suggestions? What do you guys think? I think that the Colorado is a good, good thing to consider for you. You know, headroom is probably a lot better than in the Tacoma. You know, Tacoma doesn't give you any kind of headroom for people who are over six foot one. The thing is that it will so, be proof. Yeah, that's the thing. Yes. Yes. Can you trade that for a bad back though? Well, I already have. So, I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, I think that really with a specific price point, you want to find a, some specific options and not just rattle off different ideas because, you know, it's like, I, I know what you're interested in. I could be looking for things for you more actively. And then maybe in the next, by the next recording, we'll have some more information to really go through. Yeah, that'd be but great. you know, like it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to buy a vehicle. I feel it like a long Daniel time is just thinking about BMW X5, BMW X5, <laughs> and I'm just thinking, just get a station wagon, man. Just get a station wagon <laughs> or a hatchback and just make it work. Hatch. Yeah, get a BMW 328XI station wagon. <laughs> yeah. E sweet ride wagon yeah the that's prior like, generation that's a little bit yeah. budget, but like old old yeah. uh, mercedes wagon they those are pretty badass or bmw yeah. those are pretty cool get a, 
Or yeah, you get yeah. a Volvo uh, station wagon like the guy out here. Well, my mom just sold her Volvo station wagon actually oh, last yeah? week. And I, that was kind of offered to me. But the thing about it that I didn't love is it's just front wheel drive. And then in Calgary, it's doable. But I, I'm not like going from a truck that's four wheel drive. I'm, I'm not going to go to something that's front. I would have to be all is kind of my my kind of thought process. But That's interesting. You know, after first to driving like first owning front wheel drive cars when i was younger to then only owning rear wheel drive and all wheel drive cars i don't know if i will ever choose to go back to a front wheel drive vehicle i agree yeah. i don't like them like by comparison yeah. the way they drive is not not for me i must say but that's not to say there's some ones that aren't good mm-hmm. like that's right and Actually, I quite enjoy driving Mini Coopers. I think they're a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, you can get you can actually fit tall people in Minis pretty easily. It's very. I had clients who were like well over six and a half feet tall driving Minis when I worked in Mini Cooper way back in the day, and actually, uh... they love them. And there's nothing funnier than seeing a big guy get a tiny car and I'm like, how the hell does he fit in that thing? But you realize there's actually a ton of room. They're very, they're very. Oh. Yeah. oh, I just figured out exactly what you should have. What's that? Ferrari Puro Sangue. Wow, yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. Puro yeah. Sangue. Puro Sangue. Yeah, yeah totally. Some when it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> that's my perfect that's a great car. car. Just good luck, good luck getting it, and also the the price is a little bit much, a little bit higher than what I'm. Speaking of which, thinking. you're invited to the Ferrari Puro Sangue. Uh, oh, there's a, an event oh, lovely. happening at Ferrari, Alberta. That'd be sick. And I have two plus ones. Oh. And uh, well, that was extended out to my dad, but uh, two yeah. plus one. <laughs> I like hanging out with Peter better than my dad. It's Father's Day. Anyway, right. let's talk about me. Right. Enough yeah. with Peter. Let's talk about Steve. Can we talk <laughs> okay, about Steve. me? Uh, it's really hard being me. I'm just going to be sharing all of my work here. But outside of that, uh, no one else understands the thing. They just... So here's a lot of Jesus. cars that I'm considering. But it turns out that the market is still ridiculous because everybody expects that they're going to get all the money for all their cars. That's and they don't realize that the market's not cooling down. So here's the GT3 RS 997.2 that I never should have sold. And I want it. And it's ridiculously overpriced. It's almost double what I sold it for. And that's the no room to budge. Exact one you had. Not exactly. It, ha- it it's actually not okay. as good as mine. That's even more painful oh God. because it doesn't have the carbon ceramic brakes. Okay. Here's an F8 Tributo. I think that's tempting. They're coming down. Not fast enough. This one's four seventy nine. That's a better option. I think at four hundred, these that's things a way better all option. The money all yeah. over the place. Way better option. But Especially it's still a shit new. ton of money. And then here's a GT3 Touring, two seventy nine. So if everything could come down by about sixty to seventy grand, I think all of them would be motivating. The other thing that I was also looking at is Porsche Speedsters. They're still calling me. There's one with the Heritage package at uh, four fifty nine. Again, that one needs to come down by fifty nine. Everything is like about 50 to 70 grand over what I want to pay for them. Once they come back down, I say by, you know, maybe winter, it's time to maybe think about making moves. But everybody needs to fucking wake up. These things are sitting on the market. I was talking to people at Ferrari and all of these F8s are just sitting. They're sitting for months and months and nobody's buying them. That one I want. And I want to put like a Capristo exhaust on it. Or a Novatech exhaust. It sick. would sound awesome. And this GT3 mm-hmm. screen looks damn good in uh, slate gray. I don't love the black wheels, but uh, I think it looks pretty nice. It's clean. It looks like I, a black and white photo. I literally spent the entire day in the middle of all my work calling every single one of these dealers, and not a single one of them want to move on their price. They're all like, it's competitively priced to sell. And I'm like, well, good fucking luck. We'll see. Yeah. So. Well, summer's just beginning. They're banking on interest rate sales and not impacting the economy and people wanting to purchase sports cars. I mean, I'm good. I'll hold on to my GT2 RS. I'll probably put on a, a performance exhaust on the F430 
and then I'm going to sound like a Formula One car, and I'll be okay definitely. with it. Yeah. You should definitely do that to the F430. There's an IP oh, God, yeah. F1 exhaust for the F430, and it makes it sound like a fucking Formula One car. Not mm -hmm. from today, from like... It's got to be amazing. It's going to sound yeah. Awesome. That's so great. I'm having a bit of an issue where it's like it starts to kind of like spin and bog around four to five, six thousand RPM under throttle about more than 50 percent. So I'm mm. taking it in and I was like, well, while I'm taking it in, it's probably maybe it's the throttle bodies getting a little gummy. But while I'm in there, maybe we just throw on an IPF1 exhaust and we just turn That's it into a, a fucking idea. race car. Yeah. Yeah. I'll keep all of the original exhaust. I love the fact yeah. it is a survivor and it's original and untouched and I'll be the bastard who switches it, switches it out, but that's all True. I'm going to do. I'm just doing the exhaust and that's it. I'll leave it the, the way it is, but it is going to sound fucking awesome. miraculous. And that is the day that Daniel needs to come out and listen. Imagine this, your exhaust from the Ferrari, perfectly polished and clean put into display cases Beautiful. and mounted in your garage in different places mm. that would look amazing yeah. with the all new race exhaust on there yeah. oh man and uh, yeah that would be an insane thing to hear up close right behind your ears yeah so moral of the story is cars are getting better closer to my grips new cars who knows when they'll eventually come but i'll be waiting i'll be waiting you motherfuckers <laughs> but the number one thing that i want of all is the goddamn le mans daytona that thing i need to have before i die i in fact mm -hmm. i would like to be buried in that thing. <laughs> fuck my progeny they're not getting nothing yeah <laughs> some things you just have to take with you they say you can't I say you can. Yeah. Well, here's you can a, take anything with oh, you you want. Here's one beautiful. thing that I think we need to just with the final lead out. We got to talk about this. I don't know. It's tempting, yeah. but it is the future. But is it worth me purging everything? Mission X. So this is pretty much going to be the next hypercar from Porsche that will follow uh, the 918. The thing is that it's all electric. It looks super cool. Doors go up. It's going to be ballistically fast. But will it make me super happy and pull up my heartstrings? I'm not it's sure. Not, it's all electric. Yeah. If only it had an engine. Hybrid. Even. I, I wish that it was just hybrid. I would have been totally fine, even if it had a four-cylinder. <laughs> I would have been thinking. totally fine. But look at those doors. It's It's quite beautiful. It looks really nice inside. It's going to have insane performance. It's going to be like setting uh, the, the Nurburgring record. It's going to have more downforce than the GT3 RS. It's, it's going to be amazing in performance. But is it going to be worth purging every ICE car that I have, each of which is like timeless and will never be repeatable? I, I, I question that. That being said, I did say, go ahead and put my name on the list. For whatever the fuck it is. That is a tough question to ask. I yep. think that there's several different perspectives that I'll take on the subject. I think I'll take the perspective that. So, yeah, it's cool, right? It's very cool. And it's like a video game come to life. Just like the Rymic Nevera in its own right. And it's going to be crazy, crazy fast. It'll be an experience unlike anything you can experience in many other cars. So is that experience better than the experience that you can have in other vehicles? It's hard to tell because this experience is so new. The majority of people haven't, haven't had it. And the people who have had it, like, you know, Chris Harris, not too long ago when he drove the Rimac and did four wheel drifting. It's just saying that he believes that the difference in performance has become so significant that it's become a whole other, whole other form of entertainment. 
So we'll see. I don't know. Maybe once it's out, when people can get a better look at it, and we've got like some time to digest it. Oh, so you know, yeah. I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be for me. I think that there's so much good stuff coming out of Porsche now. The one that really is going to appeal the most is going to be the ST, and from what I hear, it's going to be a Goodwood. So that's the one I want. This one's cool, but it's kind of a uh, interesting. But for me, I don't know. Definitely. I'm going to have right, to well, a lot harder to justify this. But that's it. Let's round it up. Peter and I got a right. go movie. He said, All right. This I is hope you guys show. enjoy your date night. It's... Three aficionados out. Chains on the dash. All right. Peace, motherfuckers.